First tonight, the banking boss at the centre of the Nigel Farage account closure row says she made a serious error of judgment in leaking private information to the BBC. Dame Alison Rose admitted being the source of a story that Farage's account was closed because he didn't meet financial thresholds. But documents obtained by the former UKIP leader show his political beliefs were part of the reason why Coots debanked him. Now, Farage obtained a 40-page dossier where he was described by officials as a disingenuous grifter whose opinions did not align with the bank's values. The BBC apologised for the inaccurate story, as did the business editor, Simon Jack. Well, 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 the BBC's business editor, Simon Jack, has fully apologised to me publicly, and I thank him for that. It's not often that the BBC apologise. Jack says in the tweet that his information came from a trusted and senior source. I would suggest it may well have been a very senior source. Now, last week, Dame Alison apologised for the closure of Farage's accounts and ordered a review. Tonight, the NatWest board has said it retains full confidence in her as chief executive, but there's still mounting pressure on her to resign. Now, I have to disagree with Farage there, shock horror. Uh, the BBC does apologise. It's had to do a lot of apologising of late. But this is a huge mistake on the part of Nat West. I think initially when I heard this story, I didn't really understand why the sort of private banking mm. situation of an ex UKIP leader was like a leading story. But the mm. more that this uncovers, the more you realise what a massive mistake they've made. Yeah, I mean, they really have. I was talking last week about how massive this story will get because yeah. in the end, you know, they've got everything completely wrong. I mean, even just watching uh, you reading uh, that, that earlier statement that she made, um, she said uh, last week that, you know, um, they were sorry, but she didn't say that she was the one that leaked the story. Yeah, right? Suddenly now it takes until this week till Simon yeah. Jack says that he got it from a senior source. I mean, I was saying to Kevin uh, just yesterday, I think, uh, on our show, uh, that she now has to either confirm or deny that she's the source. Mm. And having done that, she must now resign. And I can't and understand why they still can say that they've got confidence, her, confidence in her. You know, she's done something which, in most cases, in most companies, would get you the sack. That's she's the breached, hell, she's the... breached the, the, the privacy yeah. uh, of, a, of an individual uh, bank account that's holder. The howler. That's, that's, that's the huge howler here. Uh, you know, Nat West and Dame Alison Rose still don't quite realise what everyone else right. knows. Uh, she's worked at Nat West all her life yeah. and she's not going to be working there very much longer. No. She's going to go. This cannot be... Uh, substantiated by a bank. You cannot have the chief executive going where it doesn't matter if it's Farage or anyone. Mm. You cannot have the chief executive of a bank discussing confidential mm. private financial details of customers to a BBC hack. Right. And that so she has made, as she quite rightly says, a serious error of judgment. But an even more serious error of judgment <laughs> is the serious error of judgment by Nat West yeah. saying we have full confidence in her. Well, do you have full full confidence in a bank that uh, goes around talking about your personal finances? I don't. Well, no, I don't think I would either. I mean, whatever, wh whoever thinks of Nigel Farage, at the end of the day, if you don't it's like not about someone's in the end. no, anyway, what I'm gonna say is whatever your personal opinion is, the fact is you, Nat West Coots in this instance did not have a right to debank him. Hadn't done anything criminal. His values oh, right. might not align with Coots or Nat West, but that's really not any yeah, of their business. To do with it, and yeah. frankly, you know, if and I'm, we're 99 percent sure that she is the source, no, that she's, gave no, the she's BBC, no, 100 percent. Yeah, that gave the BBC she's, that incorrect information. Yeah. That she's gonna have to stand down. Like her position I don't, I don't is completely yeah. it's not untenable. Like she's said it is yeah. her. It is but her. So it's 100 percent. Yeah, I mean, I've just said her position is untenable. The thing is, I think with the, this revelation, I think we've been a bit unfair with the BBC because at the end of the day, you know, you couldn't have more a more senior person effectively confirm the suspicions that yeah. you know Nigel Farage yeah. didn't have enough money to yeah. be a coots. The BBC uh, also went back, you know, she's intimated with her, her statement today that she may have given the impression, and she's now sorry that she may have given the impression mm. um, that they'd made a decision based on something else. But in fact, the BBC have said that they went back to NatWest and asked if they were happy yeah. with the yeah. version yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. that they their said, source yeah. had given yeah. and, also, also, and they said yes, they were. Exactly. Also, yeah. So really, they, they couldn't have done anything different. Yeah. The, the, all the blame lies on sort of Nat, at, Nat at the feet of yeah. NatWest, but also they couldn't have chosen a worse person to do this. I know. I mean, really, I, I think 
think whoever decided, you know, this committee that decided that Nigel Farage's views or values didn't align with the bank really should be sacked, yeah. even but, more so than, than Dame Alison. By seriously. the way, uh, you say we're being a bit harsh on the BBC. I would suggest that maybe the BBC, the mighty BBC's mighty business editor, might actually know that Co Coots do not have a financial threshold. So he reported that story because he was desperately keen to do so. Mm. And he's landed himself in a world of trouble, and quite rightly so. How can they argue that this is in this is this story is in the public interest to correct that and to put that out there? How how is, yeah, is the private the public interest, banking yeah. details yeah. of Farage in the public interest? Yeah. It interests us, it, but it's but not, not in, in our, our public interest. interest. But it's yeah, also it's a breach of any uh, fiduciary relationship GDPR. you have exactly. with, yeah. your, with your bank. It's data protection. It's all sorts of things. Yeah. Absolutely. You know, she'll be gone before the end of the week. I yeah, believe yeah, there's, a meeting. Really it, there's a meeting. She doesn't realise it. There's a meeting. I believe. I think she's out of there. She's taken a box. I believe there's an investment meeting on Friday at which the government representative will be there. Um, and some are saying that the government representative may well say, we don't have any confidence in this, this particular CEO. Well, I'm I have sure. another list of shame in terms of banks. It includes NatWest, of course. The uh, biggest banks' policies allow them to monitor customers on their social media accounts. Some of the biggest banks have been accused of acting like communist China by monitoring their customers' social media posts. The four largest high street lenders, NatWest, Lloyds, Banking Group, uh, HSBC and Barclays, refuse to deny they keep track of people's activity. Their privacy policies say they can collect or monitor information published on social media. Other major lenders, including Nationwide, Santander and Virgin Money, also said they may check social media in special circumstances. That's a disgrace and a yeah. scam. Yeah, I think the question is. here is How to, dare they? to How what dare. end? This yeah. is the thing yeah. because banks are, you know, they have a responsibility to make sure that their customers are not engaging in fraud or getting yeah. money mm -hmm. and so for fraudulent sources. Not to chase sources. them on social exactly. media. Exactly, but, but the thing is, if if a social media or if a social media investigation is to the end of trying to buttress, you know, the information that you have received money from or you're associated with. You know, unscrupulous individuals, that's organizations. That's what you always that's do, isn't it? When you get some secret just... money from Russia, you just exactly tweet it out. And go, yeah. I've just had some secret money from Russia. Yeah, just just being involved. Check me out, man. I mean, check it. Like, just if... being involved in some underhand <laughs> yeah. activity. I mean, yeah, yeah. I mean, if you're a small <laughs> criminal, if you're flashing your Rolexes yeah. and you're going on all these like round the world trips, well, you know, I did, I did hear. Yeah, but but again, if it's the bank, that's something else. Because I was I was told by somebody the other day that that they do like the DHSS or what it is now, the Department of Work and Pensions does monitor people's Facebook accounts if they. If yeah. you're unemployed and you're on all these very expensive holidays, mm. they're monitoring that. Mm. But for social media purposes for a bank, apparently they only do it if somebody complains. But of course, if somebody complains because they don't like your politics, yeah. then they're gonna they're gonna monitor it. But it is you. only yeah. for their public posts. So nothing that's shared privately or amongst well, let's know, hope not. approved friends. Yeah.